Good morning, everybody, to a new live coding session here from our indie game, Timber Tales Definite Edition. So we are already on day eight, and uh, let us start as usual with our recap of uh, yesterday. So let us hop into the codex, and we can see from yesterday we had Twitch day seven, <clears throat> we created a standalone tie factory component. We created a standalone JSON parser component. We created the highlight for the placement and displayed it. And we included some animations. Now let us start up the Godot engine. And as we can see in Godot as well, The actual standing is we have our map, we have placement tiles which are now animated on the highlight. Like that, we can panning, we can zooming, that's actually our status quo we have at the moment. So let us just archive this card, it's done, we are done with day seven so day eight what's the plan for today um, as usual i would like to start with some project planning for that i have uh, informed myself a little bit so i have this good old book i will show it hope you can read it so it's the indie game survival guide it's a little bit older I think I already have it about 10 years or something like that. But uh, what I've read yesterday about and I would to do today is writing the game design document. And for that, I would like to approach how it was written in the book or how it is written in the book. And for that, we go to our game design document and we go to the project concept overview. <coughs> and we take the project concept overview yeah that's right and we would just rename it a little bit so instead of description this is the summary i would like to redefine Timotates in a new version, which is uh, which is called Timotates F. And with this edition, I would like to modernize the client in a new game engine Go.4. At the moment, it's written. It's unnecessary. Timotates infrastructure is quite complex at the moment because we are client-based, not needed anymore. Um, solo player game. I would like to improve the quality of nearly all assets, includes animations. If I would like to redefine the races, uh, the core gameplay, the core gameplay should be more of a roguelike hex field strategy game. So this is our summary, um, the design summary. course it depends a little bit on the knowledge of the uh, original project so uh, we need to keep that in mind the next step is the elevator pitch so i wasn't sure about that one what this means is you have something like 60 to 90 seconds to explain your game idea to someone in yeah it in uh, this 60 seconds you need to <laughs> to get your game idea explained to anyone <clears throat> and they should be hyped about this game so we try to do this um, so let us say timber tales definite edition should be a roguelike hex field strategy game where you actually choose your army at the start of a challenge <clears throat> this army contains 
three heroes, which you need to use to progress through different challenge maps. You can learn new abilities or skills while playing these maps. Also, the challenge maps will have um, unique mechanics to use. Will have unique mechanics, and there could be also some kind of boss maps where you need special tactics to beat this boss. Um, you can earn some kind of points which can be spent between the maps for new skills or improvements of your hero skills. If you fail to achieve a map, you need to start over again. All skills will be set back and the progression is lost. So this is the, the pitch for it, for actually the new core gameplay. Um, I would like to have in first place. Of course, we will extend it in future. Um, but this is just writing down the first uh, sentences about what I want to do or achieve in the next weeks. And we need to start somewhere. And I would like to have the core gameplay working actually so that we can play the game and test around, prototype a little bit more and actually having fun while playing the game. So the most important thing is to having fun with the game and of course it needs to be solid implemented and that's actually what this pitch is about. So the next point would be some kind of a unique selling points. Um, so this describes a little bit what makes the game unique for us and I think what it is is roguelike hero approach in hex field strategy animal theme and atmosphere unique map mechanics tile map so I guess these are the three points I would say for now, which are the most unique of our game, or I would like to have the most unique. So of course, the first thing is the roguelike hero approach, which should be very cool with different skills and abilities. I think our theme with the animals, I would like to stick to that because Timber Tales was made for that. And uh, I guess we would like to stick to it for now <coughs> and having that as a unique selling point. And the third thing, which uh, should be very unique and should be very cool, is the different map mechanics I would like to implement. Yeah, so let us just save this for now. This is just the selling point. So we extended it a little, a little bit. We go on there tomorrow. So let us use the next five minutes for actually making the plan for today, what we would like to do today um, I have written I would load to load I would like to load another challenge map and I would like to progress on that we have the camera view which should be first on the placement um, this I fixed already and we start with the single unit placement so let's go into coding we have the map for the mushroom hunting Challenge map mushroom hunting, yeah. So we did yesterday the loading for it, I think. Let me just fastly check it. Uh, we have the assets, maps, it's working. 
we have the mushroom map let's start it up and yeah so this is the mushroom map which was designed as that and it's working as uh, the other one as well so the map is loaded correctly that we don't need to implement what we need to implement is um, uh, we would like to first camera viewport on placement um, at first unit to place um, at game handler Think about what else do we have? Uh, add map objectives. Create water surroundings. So these are actually the five points I can think of at the moment. So let us go over them very quickly. First, camera viewpoint and placement. Uh, the camera should be on the placement zones zones as soon as the game starts uh, i would say the effort for that is quite low the priority is high because we do this at first i can already say that it's for me i can say it's coding so let us go to the next one at first unit to place uh, we need to create Create unit object. It needs to have a texture at least. So what we need is this is sprite with a texture at least, and then we can place it anywhere. Um, of course, we will need animations later. Um, but I think that's just for now. It's just very very minimal the tickets uh, we need for now we want to work with something so this we can also assign to me it's medium it's two so the game handler what is actually the game handler i would say the game the state game handler so by that i mean we need some kind of component which handles the state of our game by this i mean now by this uh, we need some kind of component which handles the state of our game. And the handler needs to be aware of we are in placement phase or which player or which player's turn it is right now. As soon as we have this handler, we can then implement turns with things like movement, attacking, spell casting, a queue for different different units. So this is what we need as the game handler. This one is quite complex. I would give it a free for now to just having some, some measure for it. So if we uh, look at the different cards, I would say the camera viewport, for example, is a one. The unit uh, we need to add is a two because we there need to add some more kind. We need to create an object. And the game state handler, which actually, actually has some more logic, uh, is a three in my opinion. We could also split up these cards to a hero card, especially for the game handler, because it involves a lot of other components. Um, for example, we would like to add unit tests there. We need to fix the logic there, and there will be also another components involved. But <clears throat> for now, let us just stick to as few cards as possible to having a better overview. So let us just uh, finish these two cards. Add map objects divs um, for the map events and mission objectives we need to parse the json data which stores the d 
different data. So I need a very short break. I'm back in a minute. So I'm back. Sorry for interrupting. <coughs> so I'm always uh, pretty, pretty, pretty much astonished how much uh, or how short of a time this uh, five to ten minutes is for project planning. We're just typing a little bit just some, create some cards we just have four cards and the time is already up for the project planning so let us just uh, finish that very fast for the map events and mission objectives we need to pass the json data which stores the different data um, that needs to be converted into the map events uh, objects etc i would also say this is quite heavy for now it's two it's a medium it's for me it's coding and uh, create water surroundings is the last one which is more a visual thing um, i would like to add the water <coughs> in the background uh, as it was on the original version just use a normal plain plain background color and create a simple shader for it to make it looking like actual water um it requires a shader for us or i would at least uh, to do it with a shader that therefore i give it a two because i'm not uh, too sure how we get it working but this is a low priority and 
yeah and what is the game handler it's also quite sorry uh, quite medium so let us uh, finish the project planning for today we are already uh, 20 minutes into and i would like to start with the actually coding so this is what we would like to do today and the days after for the challenge map hunting so we already loaded the map so we know we can place it and we can play around with that now we need to do all this stuff all these uh, five points and uh, i think there is no best way to approach it now we can we need to do everything of that i can think of at the moment uh, but i have no idea where to start well we can just pick something we would like to start with i guess uh, my suggestion would be to start with the camera viewpoint because it's just the smallest one i think it's uh, pretty much uh, easy to implement but if you have other suggestions please write it in chat and we start with something else otherwise i would just start for now with the viewport on placement because i think we can get it done easily and then we can go on with the other task and tickets um so let us see it's the map we created the map and we have a camera somewhere so in the assets in the scripts tile map we have the camera gd and there we have the input where we actually move our camera and the position what we're doing on the ready function is we are positioning our uh, camera right now on the viewport divided by two <coughs> and this the x point divided by two and the epsilon point divided by two this uh, leads to the starting position which is actually the top left corner what i would like to do is instead of positioning the camera on the top left corner i would like to do to have the camera on the first spot where our first placement cell is actually and this is uh, yeah the first in this loop so it's actually placement cell x and placement cell epsilon um <clears throat> what we need to do for that let us just think about i would like to have Yeah, what we can do for that I, we can work with a signal for that let us just uh, think about how we could implement it i would actually like to work with a, with an event here which is actually a signal in godot so let us just row up godot4 signals to just read the doku very fast using signals with signals we can use some kind of events and um, with those events we have other components which are able to listening on these events so let me just see connect we have the the standard signals which are just in uh, the objects of godot but we can also create custom signals and then we have another component which can just listen on the signal and just doing stuff on that so here it is what we would like connecting a signal via code you can connect uh, signals via code in the editor with the connect yeah on the different nodes and then we can give them a function and then we can do it around So here it's connect on the timer, it's processing, and then. So we need a custom signal first. And we call it, so let's go back. The signal should be over the things. So we say signal first placement cell. We just call this signal like that. <coughs> 
what we now need to do is we need to emit the signal. So the problem, or the better said, we can now say the signal is uh, at our placement cell and then we can say first placement cell and then we can emit and in the emit we are able to send also the placement cell. Or better said, more wait a second, we can do that here. And okay, say here. First payment cell emit, and then we'd say grid get cell, and then we get the cell coordinate. What I've done, I've removed the var. That was a mistake. So I would do it like that. What we're doing now is we're just emitting the, the cell. The problem we have, it's now emitting every placement cell. And we just want to have the first placement cell emitted. So for that, we need some kind of, uh, yes, yeah, some kind of Boolean. And we say var first placement cell emitted. This is a bool and it's false. And therefore we say if not first placement cell emitted, emit it and set first placement cell emitted is true. So in this case, what we have done now is just we are checking if the first placement cell was already emitted. If not, we emit this one as the first one. Otherwise we won't go into this block. So, what I would like to do is refactor too much uh, intention, intending, <laughs> intending, yeah, too much intending uh, for later. So, we are now emitting uh, the signal. What we now need is we need to connect the camera actually to the signal. So on the ready function, I would like to, to have our camera, which is our camera node. And there we say connect. And then on connect, as we have seen in the documentation for the signal, we need to, no, we are on, have depleted emit. Signal changed. Oh, we already need to give them a value there. So I'm a little con bit confused how to connect on the signal for now because Get no timer, connect. Let me just uh, do something like a uh, node. Child enter a node. But what I'm writing here actually, so oh, this is the camera. Connect the signal name. And then we need the callable. So the signal name is first placement cell. And the callable would be, do we have that in the doku? Ah, it's taking this, this signal, and then it's taking 
So what he is doing there is just taking the Actually, I don't need to work with the signal here. It was a good idea, but we can just... Because we have the camera object in here, we wouldn't need to do an emit here. We can just say camera move to position grid get cell cell. Because we have the camera here. And we can just use it right there. So what we need to do is we need a function. We say move to position. And this is function move to position. And it takes a position. Uh, say pause, which is a vector 2. And this vector 2 is this one and then we say position is just pause um, let us just throw up the map if it's working no it's not because move to position is not written correctly um, <coughs> let us just command that one out for now just see we have the first place yet yeah, it's right and now we want to move the camera to this cell so what it's doing now is you still say non-existent function move to position and this is because i don't know <laughs> why is it we have a move to position function in camera we just call it here. Okay, I can't read this morning. I'm sorry. So I have a lot of typos in here. So let us uh, throw it up again. And it still says invalid type in function move to position in camera. GD cannot convert argument one from object to vector two because we have the get cell right here and we what we get from our grid is we get a tile back and in tile we need to have the pixel position yeah the pixel position so what we need to have is a function which is uh, actually get pixel chord and then we return the pixel chord. What we then need to do is on the cell, we say get pixel chord. Now we throw it up again. And as you can see, it's working like I would like to have it. So what we have done now is we are just positioning the uh, camera centered on the first placement cell we get. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure. It would be cool if we are centered in the middle of the placement. So something like that. <laughs> so we would see the whole placement in first place. So we just see some placement. So what I would like to have is more something like that. Yeah, we could do this. We could do this easily. And we can say uh, on the camera, um, uh, top left, which is a bool. And on the move position function, we say false. Actually, we wouldn't need this anymore because we have a placement, but if we don't have placement cell, it would work, okay? And then we can say if top left, then the position X is 
uh, let me see it is we are in the center and we need to plus get viewport size x divided by 2 and then we need to do the same with the get viewport size epsilon divided by 2 and then we have it like this and in the map we can then say true we would like to have it on the top left and then we have it in the top left the problem is now we have it on the tile size because we need to also adjust the tile size accordingly <coughs> in the camera we don't have the tile size so for this we would like to have uh, the tile size as well we could do this by the camera we could inject it into the position for the tie size or we could take it from the parent i'm a little bit unsure what's the best approach for now we could also say something like um pixel cord is grid get cell get pixel cord and then we can say pixel cord dot x minus uh, tile size divided by 2 and pixel cord dot epsilon minus i size divided by 2 and then instead of having the grid here we then give the pixel cord and we save it up we then start it and then it's right in this case no it's not uh, it's uh, divided by 4 for the epsilon and this is the top left of the placement zones for the camera starting point so what i'm a little bit yeah i also dislike this uh, now a little bit because it's too much code here for the for the things but as you can see the uh, <coughs> the viewport itself or the task we had to implement the viewport on the placement is in general pretty simple but as you can see, as far as we go in the implementation, it becomes a little bit more stressful and a little bit more annoying because when you go into details and you would like to positioning it correct and uh, if you haven't defined the right position in first place for the planning where you would like to have it, then you're actually going into details. And if you come into details, you need to make a break somewhere or a cut somewhere and you need to decide how you would like to have it finished or how you would like to have it and how you are fine with it and for now we i can say for me at least i'm not too happy with the function as i said we have to refactor it and we will do it in the future but i can live with the result for now we can also just uh, test it with the map one So as you can see, for example, on the map one, because we have a, an off tile, uh, it, the positioning is not working quite well. There would be the center put position much better. So what I would like to do is I would like to, I would like to finish this card for now and would like to add another card where we say improve viewport on placement and we just create another card and there i would say to have it more detailed i would like to have the viewport centered in the placement zone and correctly zoomed zoomed on the placement zone so what i would like to have actually is i would like to have this as a starting zone 
Um, let me just. No, that was wrong. Sorry. Um, how to make? Can we just do a screenshot with that? Um, let me just throw up. <clears throat> the map thing and then we just have something like that so on my mac i know that i can just screenshot something no i don't want to also, uh, also. Uh, i will do it later yeah i will do it later But I would like to have this as a screenshot and then we could uh, easily add it to our ticket and then I know what I mean but I need to figure out how I can do it so for the mushroom map what I would like to have there is something like this as a starting view so this should be our goal to have in future but for now as said, let, let us just uh, stick to that. I would like to have the viewport centered in the placement zone correctly zoomed on the placement zone. So every tile is visible on the first view. So this is uh, quite a two. It is for now a low priori priority for us. I would mark it as bug encoding. So let us go on. What what would we like to do next? Let me take a zip. So we can actually we could actually start with the game handler, which is a little bit complex, or would be more complex because uh, we need to add some some logic behind it. But as I said, we all yeah we needed all of that, or we could just uh, start with the first unit. I think we I would like to start with the unit for now so we have another visual topic and afterwards go on with the with the game handler. So let us go on with at the first unit for now. We just start the ticket. And for this we just need to create new scenes, etc. So what we don't have for now, we have the scenes, we have the tile map. I would now go into is it also the time map? No, I would say we have a new. No, it's not wrong. Not no. Let's uh, let us name it game objects. And in game objects, I would like to create a new scene, which is called unit. It is a two D scene with nothing in here. And as we had for the tile map, it's it's most likely it is very comparable with the tile we have. We actually need just a new to a uh, new two D, and we actually need an animated sprite two D. And for the animated sprite two D, we need to create an animation, which is a new sprite frame. And there. Oh, let me see. Do we actually need every unit as the same as in own object, or can we do it with just the same? Okay. So uh, what I'm thinking, or what I'm considering now, is I wanted to build in unit object where we just can programmatically change the texture for the sprite and have different units but when i think about it we will later have different heroes which have more or less the same animations but they needed to be animated differently uh, it is quite so we need a scene for every unit because we need to have the textures differently per character.
Yeah, I think so. And if we doesn't, we can later um, patch it together as one. So what I would like to do is I would like to rename it to the badger for now. It's a badger unit and it's not a unit, it's a badger. And then we just create a sprite frame. What I would like to do now is to add a sprite sheet. And we have uh, the assets and we have the texture and we have the units. And there we have the badger. What we now need to say him is we need the 256 and then we need to say we have 5 horizontal no it was right with 8 horizontal I'm a little bit unsure no it's it's right with 8 but somehow they are not filled completely. So... Ah, no, what we need to do is we need to have the step... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's always a problem. I've a uh, long time not worked with the sprite sheet. What we need to create now is we go back and we say we have first our animations. What we have first is the idle animation. What we have second is the move animation and what we have third is the attack animation. <coughs> attack. So let us start with the idle. It's the first row in our sprite sheet. We open the sprite sheet. The sprite sheets all have a size of 256 by 6. It has four horizontal and one vertical. So, and it changed my controls again. So the problem we have right now with this, uh, with this tool, we can just say something like that. Ah, okay, it's working like that. So it's a little bit complicated uh, to do it like this. I'm not sure if it's the right way to do it, but in this way we can actually achieve what we would like to do. So what we need is the first idle animation and these are the first four frames. So we add the first four frames to idle, then we go over to the attack, then we do actually the same. Then we actually say it's 256 as before. We have the eight, we say all uh, selected, then we remove every Thing we don't need we are in the attack move now yeah attack so attack is this one we have the attack frames which are just five frames then we have at least uh, at last the uh, movement the movement we also need to adjust the size again and we pick the movement frames and last but not least we need a death animation and for the death animation, we also take the badger, we also take the frames. So what you can see right here is our sprite sheets and now we have created and split them on the different uh, things. We can also place the badger right here um, and make it a little bit bigger so you can look at it, how cute and fine it is. So if we take the idle animation now, it's with five FPS and uh, we can play it. And there you can see this is our idle. So we can say the idle should be auto played because uh, it should be always into the idle mode. Then we have the death animation, which uh, shouldn't be looped. And it could also be a little bit faster. So let us adjust it by 10 FPS. And here it's a cool thing. And now in the editor of Go.S, we can now play around a little bit and see what, what we're liking. I have no idea. I could now look to the uh, original one, how it was uh, framed there. But I don't want to spend too much time on, on this adjustments and modifications because uh, the thing is, 
we don't want to stick to them. I would like to create new characters in future, so everything we need for now is just to have some reference images and just work with them. And uh, therefore, I just yeah create them very fastly. <coughs> So we have the death animation, we have the attack animation, we have the idle animation, and now at least we have the move animation, which should be also 10, I think. Yeah, 10 is fine. And it should, shouldn't be looped, or it should be looped. The move can be looped, actually. The death uh, shouldn't, the attack shouldn't, and the idle should. So these are our animations. For the badger now right now but but uh, yeah actually uh, we don't need them for now it's just we have the sprite sheet so we can just uh, quickly add them so what we have done now is we just added our badger which was pretty fast we don't even need to add a script <laughs> right now um because he can't do anything um so this was actually quite easy and quite fast to add the first unit. What we of course would like to do now is we would like to have the unit placed on a tile or better said on our map in future. But before we can do this, we need to actually to do a lot of stuff. We really 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 need to do a lot of stuff to get this happen so let me just think about it how we go on from here so what i would like to do now is just to create a simple simple just yeah what i would like to do now I have no idea what I would like to do now. I would like to do now to place just the badger on the first cell, just to have a look how it's looking in the game. So, to do this, to do this, we just remove the placement cell for now. By that, uh, we don't have the highlights anymore for it. And what we now would like to do is just place the badger on this. Uh, grass uh, flower theme uh, tile so this is the first thing and we have the pixel coordinate here so what we need to do is just for testing if our badger is working correctly i would just say we have our badger here and this is res uh, sorry that was too much load res scenes game objects badger so I have uh, I need to take another break. I'm sorry. I'm back in 2 minutes. Dip, dip, dip.
So I'm back. Here we are, back again, back to the action, back to business. What? What? Wrong? Walked? Wrong? I think I have uh, fucked up the scenes. Let me see. Yeah, I think we are back into the game. Editor. So what I have done is I've just loaded the scene right now for the badger. And what I would like to do now is just uh, instantiate a badger instance and just and just yeah and just <laughs> so what we would like to do here is we have our map we have a tile container we have the grid data i would like to add to a map another node 2d which is actually a unit container and we put it over the tile container and therefore we actually need a new variable here which is a new unit container which is a node 2d which is getting a node which is a unit container so what we then need to do is we take the unit container add child and there we put in the badger and then we need to say the badger position is the pixel chord position so let us start up the scene and he is saying invalid type in add child in base uh, the object derived class of argument one okay sorry ah sorry uh badger instance is badger instantiate badger instance is added as child badger instance position i can't write position should be there and as we can see there is nothing why isn't there anything so let us check we have the map we have a unit container and we have the badger but we can't see the badger we can't see the badger right now this is a problem i'm not aware of let us put the unit container under the tile container and this also changed nothing let us just zoom out to see if we have placed it somewhere no <laughs> i can't see it i'm not sure can you see it but i had expected uh, at least i would like to have expected that the badger is somewhere drawn on our map but it's not here so damn it uh, let us go into the tile and let us go to the 2d scene and let us just say we won't like to have the badger and we open it if we have it down below it's working like here so what's actually so it needs to be bigger than that i think so let us just check out uh, the first placement cell um, let us remove the badger from here from the tile we go to the map we go to our script we go to the first placement cell uh, we create we shot up now we, what we have done now is we are here in the breakpoint of our first placement cell and what i would like to look at now is the remote tree and there you can see our badger was added and our tiles are added you can see in the animated sprite that he is on idle mode and you can see two things which are actually interesting for us now the first thing i would like to see on the animated sprite is the z index which is on zero do we have the z index also as well here yeah it's zero 
So we have zero there. On the tiles, we normally have the Z index zero, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, okay. So this Z index are quite big. Mm, so this we could have a problem of the z index right now um let us just see if this is the problem we can go to the so i have no idea which one is the right so i just set it to 100 or both and then we just save it and we throw up the map again and then we see the badge okay so we have a problem with the z index and we now need to think about it um how we can actually fix it because what i dislike a little bit is to set the z index on the rights so maybe what we can do is to set the z index again on zero and zero but we know already that the position is fine it's working and uh, it's on the right cell so what we just need to adjust is the z index so what i try to do now is just to set the the unit in the uh, container z index to 250 and then it's just working um what i would have expected is that the z index of the unit container is higher than the tile container if we move it up in the tree but as you can see this is not the case if we set the z to relative then it's also not the case so we really really need to work with the z index to have this working or have it visible um for that i would like to do this programmatically yeah i would like to do this programmatically so we'd go into the script and we have somewhere the z index we are setting here and therefore we say we have a variable which is max z index and it's an int i hope it's an int and then we go on on the creation tiles and we have the z index right here and where's the calculator and what we say is max we say self max sorry max z index is max max z index and z index plus one so by this function what I do is I try to save in the calculate pixel position the max z position. And then we have the max z position. And then what I would like to do in the badger frame or here is I would like to say the unit container z index is the max z index. And so we could see our units because we set the max index for the unit container as max index <clears throat> so let us just enjoy our first unit on the tile map so please have a short look with me we have a tile map which is actually pretty beautiful with our trees and our grass and our flowers <laughs> and it has so joyful colors and now we have placed our first unit which is actually also animated and is idling around on this tile he's standing there in the right position yeah and is just idling and enjoying the sun 
and the trees and the flowers and the grass. And I think this is quite cool. <laughs> so let us take this moment. Um, we have added a unit now on an easy way. What I would like to go on with or what I would like to do now is to uh, comment in the cell placement again because on this case we have the placement again which uh, is not annoying for now we can just leave it there and the other thing I would like to do now is doing some kind of refactoring and uh, making the code a little bit better because we have just uh, cre now created the possibility to add our unit to a tile very very basically and what we now need to do is to define it a little bit better to make it a little bit better and by that i mean different things so for example we have the batcher instance which is setting the position here and i would not like to have it right there instead i would like to have something like Badger instance, how we have done it with the tiles before, set pixel cord, and then we say pixel cord, and then we just do the add child to the unit container, and therefore, sorry, sorry, what is he doing? Man, pixel cord. So we go into the badger, we now add finally a script the batcher and we say new script a new folder we go to our scripts folder we take on our new folder and we also name it here game objects and we say it's a batcher it's a batcher it's a batcher and then we just uh, remove it then we do have a var which is a pixel coordinate which is a vector 2 um, and now i would like to look something else up uh, set get in Godot we have uh, the possibility to use set get uh, functions and uh, no not that I think there was something with set get in the documentation, but I can find it right now. Better and getter function. Why I can't find the go.4 documentation with set get. <laughs> Search the docs. Set get. Uh, I think this is the right one. Properties such as in getters, set get. Unlike set get, the properties set and get are always called. So what I will actually would expect for the set get tool is that we can just say set get and we have a setter and getter for the property, uh, but I don't want to define it. So if I just say set get uh, expected end of statement can't use it in this way set get. Unlike set get in previous, the property set and get are always called except even if it's a alternative exported properties. Let us go back into this GD script set get. 
let get identifier. Ah, uh, it's not what I would like to do. Hmm. No, we just can't use it in this way. Just with get my property and set my property. But yeah, I, I have no idea why I should define it on top of it like this with the setter and getter when I then have to actually write the setter and getter. That actually makes no sense for me. So what I would like to just have is a function where I have set pixel record which is just the chord, which is vector two, as we have done it in the tile before. I, yeah, I am a little bit confused right now. But actually what we can do, or actually what I would like to have is, I would like to have that as, this, as in component, because we already used it on the cell, and now we already, want to write it another time. So <laughs> we go back a step and we added new node 2D. And this node 2D is our pixel position component. And I would do like a, a branch out of that scenes. And I will create a new folder, which is utils and I would name it pixel position component. <coughs> Let's go in there. And then we have a pixel position control and we take a new script. We go to the scripts, 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 scripts. We create a new folder, which is called utils as well. And we open this one there. What we then do is the same what I've written right there. We go to the tile. We take the pixel cord out of that and put it there. We go into the tile and we say set and get pixel port. And we put it over here. Then we have a get function and a set function for the pixel port. Then we actually save this one. Then we go back to the tile, tile map tile. Let's open the tile scene. Then we add it to the tile here. We add the pixel position component. And then we say on ready var pixel component is let us go back to the pixel component class pixel uh, class name pixel chord component. Let us save this one. Then we say it's a pixel chord component and we get a node which is the pixel chord component. So what we then do is we say pixel component get pixel chord is our position here and we had So now let us go to set pixel chord. It's not done here, it's done in the grid. Set pixel. No, it's not. Where where was it called? The pixel chord. We had the set pixel chord somewhere. I have the Ah, it was in our create tile component factory, of course. There we have the set pixel chord. And what we need to do is instead of setting it there, we need to say on the tile, we have the pixel component, 
component and it's setting the pixel chord. So let us just run our test. We have test for it and there may be failing a lot of them now. Um, <coughs> cannot show on a null value. Highlight. Okay, that's not what I had expected. So let us just take So what the problem is now is the pixel component of our tile instance I've just created isn't existing because when we instantiate the tile, the pixel component isn't ready because we do it over the get function here. <clears throat> and this is the case we don't we don't have it at start. This is why I dislike it a little bit in Godot to work with, uh, with the nodes or the components because we can just use them as soon as the tile is added to the scene. And in our tile factory, we haven't added it now and we don't want to add it at this moment. And that's the problem that we don't have the component ready as soon as we can't, can't use it. With the on ready function. Otherwise, we can take the component, I would say. This is all done in the ready function. Instantiate. So we have the same problem as before with the components. So let me just check one thing. Um, I was w uh, watching at Godot in its state machine tutorial and something I was watching there. No, it wasn't finished was go dot composition versus inheritance or and call I it damage. I think it is it was. So what I would like to see is the component approach. So how is he working with the component? There it's an export var health component. health component damage if health component damage so he's actually doing the same with this thing if it's set so he's actually doing the damage thing and then with a component yeah it's actually a little bit a problem because <clears throat> when we now say we have to we have to tie and we have to pick the component and then we again set a, a function which is set pixel chord <laughs> which is actually the same as before and we have the pixel chord which is vector 2 and then we add if pixel component pixel component set pixel chord pixel chord oh, can't write it so this is what he has done in this in his component and when we then start up the map again we will have the same problem that uh, this is null but then we can of course go back to this and then we would have the problem here because non-existent function get pixel chord of the cell because then of course we wouldn't have the get parameter there and then when we go now back to the get 
function where we then again <laughs> add a function for that here it becomes a little bit stupid to have it in this way because then we could just instead of having the pixel component if he's not doing nothing else and just having the position and we re-implement it here then the question is if we would like to actually do it with the chord because now we i had to do the same in the function where i have to set pixel chord then we have pixel chord i will do it to the end and then we can see if it's uh, if it's good or not so we go to the badger and we have the pixel chord component and we save our pixel component is our pixel chord component and sorry this is on ready is get node and then we have the pixel composition and here we say if pixel component pixel component set pixel chord is the pixel chord and then we go back to the map and then we fire it up and as you can see the problem is now that we can't move the position because the if is uh, failing at the tile factory because he is saying we don't have the child so what we need to do instead is to having the uh, child added first to have the ready function called and this is just in this case when the ready function is called So what we could do to have this working is we could do dependency injection instead of returning the tile instance. So what we could do is we could remove the return, we could go to the map and say create tile and at the end of this we could say tile container we go to the tile factory and we say we get our tile container here which is actually a node 2d i think it's not that important and then we just say tile container add child and then we would add the tile instance here and then it should fix our map problems and then we have again the thing too many arguments at least seven but received six i'm sorry that was wrong yeah oh, damn it pixel cord <coughs> create tile because this is the tile and the last thing is not the pixel z index it's the oh this constructor is just i think i moved it just to the wrong container so invalid in get cell cord on tile invalid index cell cord on tile because tile is null why is tile null ah oh, of course because the uh, tile container is afterwards added and the grid is afterwards added <coughs> to the tile so what we instead need is to remove this and also add the grid here to have the grid oh, let me just remove it oh sorry yeah as i said i'm not sure if this is the a good approach because then we also need to add the grid to the factory then we also have here the grid which is grid data or something like that i have no idea grid data what's the class name it was just grid uh, 
I'm not too happy with that, as you can see already. So then we have the grid added here. Add cell, and of course we need to add the tile instance then. Instead of that, and we go back to the map, and there we have to remove the add file function, then at least we can remove the add function, and we have just the factory here, which is creating this, but we need to give it the tile container and the grid. So, and then we can shut up the map and uh, we see nothing. This is cool. This is not working at all. I have no idea why, because we're just adding the tile instance to the grid and it child and it should add it there. Tile instance. Tile container. Grid. Add tile map. Ah, it was maybe it was the wrong node. Yeah, it was the wrong node, and then he said te set texture on a non-existent function set texture because the tile container. Yeah, it, sorry, it should be the tile instance, of course. <coughs> but we again see nothing here. Okay, so let us just revert it i'm not i'm not too happy with that as you can see we don't get it to work with this and i think the factory was better before and i think it was also better to have the add function there pixel cord let us go back to this one then we have this problem and therefore i would say we uh, go back to the utils and we delete it completely and then we go to the scripts and we delete it completely and then we go to this one <coughs> and just copy that and then we just uh, close it and we go to the tile and just put it here then we just take out that one and put them there and then we go to the badger and remove everything here and put it there no no i've missed clicked so i'm sorry sometimes you need to find figure things out how they work and I would say in general it's okay to have a position component but I dislike the way how I've implemented it and how it worked actually but it doesn't work so we removed all the pixel components hopefully now we should do the same now we should up the map again and this is also not right this is the pixel cord then we shoot up yeah it's okay now we shoot up the map again and we are at least back here now the badger isn't shown anymore because of the instantiate that pixel cord add badger to the pixel cord yeah because we had the pixel cord and what we now need to add here is the funk ready where we actually set the position to pixel cord and then the badger should be back on our map yeah that's right so we have this this date off before i have to go to p i'm sorry i'm back in a minute
So I forgot that I need to do a short phone call. I'm back in two minutes. I'm sorry for that. Uh, please stay tuned. I'll be right back. have mute unmute so sorry i'm back so we are back into business we have the the badger now working and the map is working again so what i've tried to do in the past minutes was to having a pixel coordinate which is actually so what we have is a pixel chord variable which is just defining our position and we have this now in this badger and we have this in the tile because both are related to the pixel chords and I would like to have that into a component for the future but uh, with the first implementation of a component it didn't work that well because we can't do it with a node because then we need to have the unready the ready function so what we could do instead is instead of having a component we could maybe work with a class and a, a simple gd script so i'm not sure but let us let us check this out so what i would like to do is go dot for class usage <clears throat> Come on, fuck you. <laughs> it is now class usage. So quant is uh, don't want my ad block anymore. I'm pretty happy for that, that it's uh, now on stream. Ah, oh, man. Eh? So this was it for quant. I'm sorry. We go back to brave. I'm pretty happy with that. Man. Eh? So, all these interruptions today and all these problems, it's uh, best, best. Search Brave. Why isn't it search on Brave? Go.4 class usage. Oh man. Eh? And now he has some cookies. This is the, not the right documentation. The reference, the go class resources, classes. That's GD script. That's every uh, class. Let's class something in our class. The funny part about it is I know I have some tutorial videos where I have made for myself how to use classes. <laughs> so we could up my uh, we could look up my own uh, 
thing, but I think the newly created class will be available in all other GD file scenes in Godot. Naming a class, use the class name, add it to the glo and add it to the global scope. How is it done on the global scope? Ah, it was done by that inheritance here. So what we need to do, what we actually could do, so let me see. What we could do is we could create a script. We could create a new folder, which is called utils. And then we have a utils and we make a new script, which is called pixel position component. As we had before, this is just a script now. And then we have a class extends node and it's the class name pixel position component. And for that, as before, we say we have a var pixel board, which is vector two. And then we have the func get pixel chord, which returns our pixel chord. And then we have the func set pixel chord, which actually gets a pixel chord, which is vector two. And we set self pixel chord is pixel chord. Don't need this one. So this is our component. And then we go to the project settings and then we go to the auto load. And then we can say scripts utils this one. And we can auto load continue to invertigo normal. Okay, so I'm not sure if classes are already implemented. Then we can test it. If we now say we have a var pixel component and this is pixel chord component new. Could not find script for class pixel chord component. So it's not. So how would we add it to the global scope? I was thinking about doing it here. So what we need to do is pixel port component und geht auch nicht mit den eines existierenden globalen Skript überein. Ah. So we need to name it differently. But if we name it differently, then the question is why we actually using the class name as this one is saying. Because what we now need to do is pick the component new. And this is working. This should work. At least. <coughs> And then we have a class component right there uh, we can use. And then we actually can use the same approach as we had before. But actually what we don't need is then a class name right here because it then it needs no class name. Okay, so let us just stick to this approach for now. I would just uh, firstly make it for our badger as well. We have pixel component here. And this is pixel component new. And then on the get pixel component, we have the pixel component get pixel chord. And also on the position, the pixel component get pixel chord. And on the setter, we then have the pixel component set pixel chord. It's the pixel chord. Pixel chord. So I am not sure if we actually having uh, won that much with this uh, change, but for now I would like to have it there. Pixel component get pixel chord. 
uh, get pixel chord is pixel component get pixel chord and set its uh, pixel component set pixel chord let us just save it we have saved it let us just go for the map let us just shoot it up and he's saying new in base node non-existent function This is cool that it's even not working. Class name pixel chord component component. We make it again there. We then do it and it's saying the same because non existent function new in the pixel chord component. I think it's because of the class name and not the class. So I think this tutorial is quite wrong, unfortunately. So what we need to do is we need the go dot for documentation. And we need to find classes. And Therefore, we have somewhere, hopefully, this script. Let us say GD script class. GD script grammatic warning system, thread style guide reference so let us go through this and let's just look for class this is class name this is not what it helps us this is class so what we can do is we actually can have a class right there and then it's actually working or instead we can do the class name i have actually no idea what's the difference between this Two, but I think in our case it's, it's actually the problem because what we need to do is we need to have extends node and then we would say we have the class pixel port component and then we would say this is our function and this is it Uh, class pixel hides a global hides a global so I'm a little bit confused what is this now okay this is not working as I would like to have it so let us go back. Let us go back to the original class name pixel chord component. We say pixel chord component. We say it like that. We restart it and you see pixel component is not there anymore because I have uh, removed it. I want to like to have it. So now we have it with pixel position component. Is this now the name of it? No, this is pixel chord component. Oh, <laughs> pixel position component. I'm sorry of that. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, confused and uh, everything is broken at the moment. So we are again now in a problem that we don't have the new and it's saying non existent function new go dot non-existent function new so I'm not sure about that
and yeah this is uh, this is really not helpful so let us skip it for now let us take it back also this approach is not working as i would like to have it unfortunately so i would like to go back 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 for this and i would like to go back for this <laughs> so position is our pixel cord ah i'm sorry and i would like to show you something and it's not working as intended or expected i'm yeah i'm also not quite sure why it's not working but we now drop that and let us just fire it up and then we have could not pass global class because here is What has he done now? I have no idea. Now it's completely broken. Could not pass global class tile from tile. Because here are some problems in it. Okay, so this is the problem. And was a little bit weird. So let us just shoot it up. So you have a pixel component right here on the map. We don't want it anymore. We don't have a pixel component on a tile anymore. So we are taking the pixel cord back into business. And now we are back. We are back on business. Okay, so with the pixel component, it doesn't work for now. I will check it up in my free time if I find some time how the classes are working and then we can actually do it with the classes. Uh, another time it's no problem for now what i actually just hate about the pixel cord component of the pixel in general now is that we have duplicated code in our tile and in our badger scene and what i would have liked to do is just to have a, a cool component which is storing our cords and then we don't have to buzzer around with the classes here and have to do the implementation twice <clears throat> as i said i will look up for the for the solution there let us just go back into business here and let us see what we have done so far so what we have done today was we have added our unit as a as, as a game object with a sprite animated sprite sheet where we have added our sprites and now we are just setting on the first chord our badger um, for this, we are creating a new instance of the badger. We setting the position there. We set the unit container set index to the max index, and we add then the unit. So this is actually the code we actually don't want in this place, <clears throat> or we should move out of here. It was just to to look if our units are working correctly and uh, they are do so so what we need to do instead i will just remove it for now because we don't want that here anymore um, let's fire up the scene it's without the badger that is fine we have to calculate tile pixel position which is uh, done here and it's called in the pixel position what we need to do afterwards is we need to set once the placement the camera bounding is set we need to set our unit container z index to the max z index that is uh, some part of creation the map we need to add it here and later on we would need a function to add a unit which was actually done by the badger so we can just create so we have create map i would like to add at lastly a function to create unit just to see how it's working so what we had was this we had the badger instantiate instantiate we then would have the the position 
so we would have the badger instance set pixel cord which is some pixel cord and last but not least we would have a unit container and then we would add the child add this for this we need a pixel cord which is vector 2 and we would need to have a unit here which we can yeah which is actually unit and it's a packed scene unit instance and this would be a unit instance so this is the uh, function we would have to add units to make our code working again or see if it's work i would say we go here again and we say we say we have our badger instance for now so what we are doing is we create a unit and we would give it a pixel cord and we would say it's badger instantiate no it's badger it's just badger and in this case we could fire it up and the badger is back up there so we have proved that our create unit function is actually working so this is what i would like to have here right now so we have this function let us go back into the codex uh, we created a new unit object with the texture and the animation so i would say we added the first unit and this ticket is done so the next thing we would start with tomorrow is the game handler um, as i said at the beginning of the stream we need the game handler to be aware of uh, the game state by the game state i mean we need to see if we are in the placement phase if we are in the moving phase or whatever and we need this handler to tell us where the game is actually in which state and then we can react to the state and can do whatever we would like to do so for tomorrow i would like to have to have a game handler which is saying us we are in the uh, placement phase and then we can add our badger to one of the placement fields for example that would be a, a cool step we could do tomorrow so let us just uh, at last go to the twitch and we say we have twitch <coughs> day nine for tomorrow we take this into account we take this into account and then we say for tomorrow at game state handler and afterwards start with placement phase click placement cell drop badger so this is it for tomorrow let us see what we have for today it's also the text and the title i would like to add into that need to for day nine uh, i changed the title a little bit for today uh, let us just see i will do this later it's no problem so let us just uh, finish it right here so for tomorrow i would add the game state handler and then we start with the placement phase and we would trying to achieve that we can place our first unit afterwards i would like to move around with this unit so we are then in the movement phase and then we could move around so i think today it was a little bit struggling with the classes and stuff i try to look them up i can also write it here in very quickly uh, look up how classes work global scope I know it's possible i've already uh, used it in the past as i said i also have a tutorial so maybe i just look my own tutorial and then uh, we can create the classes as the pixel component i also try to get in a, a better understanding how we can use this component because i would like to have components which are actually doing some stuff and interaction with us and yeah we will see how we can implement that so i think we have something to do for tomorrow i also think we achieved 
something for today. So we have a unit now, we have a unit with an idle animation. We can see it, we have placed our camera in the right position and we have written a lot of code. What we haven't done today is uh, unit testing. Um, sorry for the interruptions from my side for today. <clears throat> that was a little bit much. Uh, I try to be a little bit more active tomorrow and then we can do a lot of more coding and stuff tomorrow and maybe we get more to, for tomorrow a better result or a better achievement done but actually i think it's no problem because in general we are making progress so there are days where you where everything is running fine and then we, there are days where the progress is maybe a little bit slow um, the very important part for us as indie game developers in general is just to do a bit every day and if we are just stick to the schedule we will achieve and progress through anything and we will overcome all the problems as we did before and uh, yeah i think we are fine so far and i'm looking forward to tomorrow or day nine and i hope to see you again there so have a nice day bye bye <laughs>